So I'm going to go over the um, coefficient of friction lab today just to kind of um, show you guys how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the course materials and I'm going to go to content. And then I'm going to go to application of Newton's laws and I'm going to click whatever the first thing is. And I'm going to look on this sidebar and since I just want the lab, I'm going to go on the sidebar until I can find the lab handout and I see it right here so I'm just going to click that <clears throat> and download it. Uh, mine goes into my downloads folder uh, but it also shows up down here in uh, Chrome. So here we are. Um, here's the lab. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull it up like this and I'm going to get rid of the other stuff and I'm going to go here Okay, so here's my friction lab. Um, I'm gonna make my lab paper a little smaller um, just so I can make the lab a little bigger. And um, I'm gonna go with that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna hit begin and I'm gonna go down to try and get my object mass as close as I can to 221. Um, it looks like I had a good one and then I kind of lost it. Okay, 224, that, that's good. Okay, and I'm just going to make a note here um, that I use 224. Okay. Okay, so you can do that in your lab as well, um, just to kind of so you remember. Okay, and then it says um, click on the types of surfaces, rubber on ice, and then press start. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm going to press start. Okay. And then it says I need to um, take a screenshot of my lab. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hit zoom out because I think I'll be able to see a little better. Um, and I'm going to take a screenshot of this graph. Okay. Then um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw my screenshot in here um, just so I don't forget to include it. There we go. And it's still really big, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it smaller because, I mean, it doesn't need to be that large. Okay. And then it says the first section of the graph represents static friction. Notice the static friction increased until it reached a maximum value. Record that maximum value in your data table. Okay, so my force of static friction, it's not going to be um, 0.25, it's going to be a little less than that, so like 0.23. So I'm going to do that. Um, okay. And my mass was 224. Okay. Okay, um, and then it says the second relatively horizontal portion is the kinetic force. Uh, record a force that is uh, vertically in the middle of the series of points, so something like this. And it looks like that um, right here would be 0.15. So a little bit up would be like maybe 0.17. So I'm gonna write that. Okay. Okay, and then it says repeat this step using um, 46 and 796 grams. Okay, so I'm going to hit reset. Oh, reset, and then I'm going to try and get something close to 46. 493, that's going to be good enough for me. Okay, so I'm going to write I used 493 grams and then I'll write whatever the other one is. I just don't want to forget what I used, even though I put it here. Okay, so now I'm going to, um, we're still going to keep rubber on ice right now. And so we're just going to kind of go. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with my graph. I'm going to hit this max. Okay, and, and luckily it looks like it's about 0.5. So that'll be easy enough. And then the kinetic friction, it looks like 0.4, maybe like 0.39 because it, it, they want vertically in the middle. And so the top is definitely 0.4, but you know, it's just a little bit below that. So I'll do 0.39. Um, and then I'll try, I'm going to go back and I'm going to try and get my uh, 796. I had a, a good one. I should have just left it. 784. I'm going to go with that. Um, okay. Okay. Now, um, rubber and ice still, so I'm going to start. Okay. So I'm going to look at this. My, um, Static friction, it looks like it's you know halfway between 0.7 and 8. And so what would that be like 0.75? And then our kinetic friction is gonna be um, sorry about that. I'm at my parents and they have a clock that does bird noises. Um, a little bit above 0.6, maybe 0 0.63. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to pick two more surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead, aluminum on steel, glass on glass. That sounds good. Okay, and I'm going to try and get similar values for my um, for my mass. So I'm going to try and get like a 220-ish. I've already got 784 here, so I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to just do that one first. Um, just to save me a step. So here we go. So it looks like my static friction is a little less than 0.7, maybe like uh, 0.67. And my kinetic is, here's 0.5, here's 0.6, so maybe like 0.55. Okay, and now I'm going to go do the, the lower ones. Oop. 467, we'll go with that. Should start. And on, 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 on. Okay, so I'm not going to do all of these for you. Um, you know, and then you'll get these here. Pick another surface, anything you want. It's totally up to you. Okay, and then we need to determine the normal force. Okay, so your normal force is just your, um, is equal to your gravitational force. So I'm going to, um, they call it your weight in this class, and they actually call it W um, on the thing. So it's just mg. Okay, your, your force due to gravity is equal to your normal force, and that's just mg. Okay, and so um, the important thing here is since we are in grams, all these things are in grams, you're going to need to convert your mass from grams to kilograms in order to get the right answer before you plug it in the formula. Okay? And then your G, you know, you're on Earth, so it's just going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. It's going to be a little G. Okay? So that's how you do that one. So I'm going to do one of these calculations for you. That way I can have the um, answer for the next one. So um, I'm going to do my normal force is equal to mass times gravity. My mass, I'm going to do this very first one right here. I'm going to highlight it because that's the one I'm going to work on. Um, and so I'm going to do um, 0.224 times 9.8. Okay, so I'm going to do 0.224 times 9.8. So I'm going to get um, 2195 as my normal force. Okay. 
Okay, and then when I solve this one, okay, um, so I've got this listed, I'm doing the static one, and I'm going to have u is equal to f divided by my normal force. So um, I'm going to have my friction force, which was 0.23. I'm going to divide that by my normal force, which is 2.195. Let me get um, 0 0.105. This has no unit, so I'm going to just put that there. And then there's that one. And then you'll do the same thing for the friction, for the kinetic. Okay, so you'll do the exact same thing. The only difference is you'll put your kinetic friction in here, which was 0.17. And so you'll do 0.17 times 2.195, and you'll get 0.373. And so then you can throw that in the data table. And so that's how you'll solve those. So make sure you get the normal force first. And you want to show those calculations and you want to show the other one. And, you know, it, it doesn't hurt to show the calculations anyway because you need them, you know, to do the, um, to do the lab anyway. Um, so. And then you're going to answer your questions. And that's, that's all you have to do. Okay. So um, you'll need to show your calculations for, you know, all three rubber on ice. Um, and then you're going to need to show all for um, your second surface. You don't have to choose the same surface I chose. And then the third surface. Um, okay, and you want to show all three calculations. Um, and then this is the static, right? So this is going to be, um, and then you'll do it again. And the same thing, so you'll do both for these two. And that's all you have to do for your lab.